Have you ever tried to send money abroad and been frustrated with the speed, cost, and transparency of the process? Have you ever thought about divesting assets into a secondary market, but struggled with finding the right approach and marketplace? Have you ever wanted to use an asset that you own, like a house or a portfolio, in some financial transaction, but been bogged down in the paperwork? Have you ever tried to raise money, but been frustrated with the process of managing cap tables, managing corporate actions, and paying several layers of fees to third-party service providers? This list could go on and on. These are some of the key frustrations and pain points that asset tokenization, a blockchain-enabled process, helps solve across many different use cases. My name is Ben Elbaz, head of ecosystems here at Hashkey Group. And throughout this module, I'll be giving a briefer on what asset tokenization is, how it has evolved from its early days to today, how it works, why it's beneficial, and the actual process of creating an asset-backed token. Asset tokenization is simply the process of creating a digital representation of something of value. It's basically digital data. These data get saved to a blockchain database, which makes the data tamper-proof and more interoperable with the outside world. This interoperability feature is what creates tokenization's liquidity benefits, which means that the more open and accessible the asset, the easier it is to use across different markets. A digital token itself is simply just a digital proof of ownership to some underlying asset. That underlying asset could be physical, in the case of real estate ownership tokens, or the asset could be digital in the case of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum. I'll come back to more details on this later. One of the key technologies behind tokenization, modern computer cryptography, has been around for over four decades. The first use case back then was for secure business communications and email. The use of this technology to successfully protect digital units of value essentially started with Bitcoin back in 2008. Then, later on in 2014, through the Ethereum project, the technology was further applied to protect other more general purpose digital units of value. After Ethereum launched, many players in the market began to experiment with different ways to tokenize different assets. This included new ways to fund assets, specifically through the crowdfunding initial coin offering boom in 2017. Similar to the early internet.com era, there was a lot of money raised and a lot of questionable value propositions. Over time, the market has evolved better mechanisms to filter out poor quality projects, such as security token offerings, which are STOs, and initial exchange offerings, which are IEOs that we see in the market today. Understanding a few basic concepts will allow you to better grasp the bigger picture and put this knowledge to use. I'll go through these item by item. Any asset that gets tokenized uses a combination of blockchain, smart contracts, accounts, and applications. A blockchain is the distributed database that holds the digital data corresponding to the token. The token itself is actually a number written on a digital account corresponding to an individual user. These token accounts can be simple or complex, and for each token there is a corresponding software code that creates the rules for each token. So for example, these rules can include how many total tokens can be issued, whether each issued token is unique, as in the case of non-fungible tokens, and whether an account has to be whitelisted or certified in order to hold tokens. This software code is also called a smart contract, which you hear a lot in the industry today. Finally, in order to tokenize an asset, asset owners or companies use applications to create the token, configure the details of the issuance, and manage the distribution process. These are usually just normal web applications that integrate with blockchains at a lower level. Why are some of the world's biggest financial institutions and banks investing in asset tokenization? Why are some of the world's smartest technologists building unique decentralized financial tools around tokenization? What's in it for them? Well, some of the benefits that these folks are considering include the benefits of liquidity, fractionalization, and efficient reconciliation. For liquidity, by bringing an asset on blockchain, or bringing it on chain as we would say, the asset is able to be traded and authenticated in split-second time across different traders and services that are already active in blockchain-based finance. There are examples of both physical assets as well as digital assets being tokenized. We see fund managers interested in tokenizing LP interests so that fund investors have more liquid secondary selling opportunities without asking for redemptions. We also see Bitcoin owners tokenizing their Bitcoin on the Ethereum network 
in order to trade their Bitcoin in Ethereum's well-developed decentralized financial services network, otherwise known as DeFi. DeFi is an interesting topic that we may explore in more depth in the future. And then there's fractionalization. This means that it's possible to take large investments and create fractional sub-investments that enable more investors to participate. Basically, you're able to reduce minimum buy-in or investment thresholds for investing into an asset. Blockchain-based tokenization enables this benefit because the whole process, including account reconciliation, managing cap tables, managing transfers, and more, is made easier through the technology. Efficient reconciliation is another key benefit which actually drives the value proposition in the other two key factors that we just noted. We'll talk more about this as well as other major benefits of asset tokenization for institutions and investors in the next course. The asset tokenization space is quite broad, including everything from tokenized securities offerings, to tokenized currencies, to even tokenized digital assets. Similar to capital markets, you can break down the market into two parts primary market sector and the secondary market sector. In the primary market sector, there are several key market participants that support asset tokenization transactions. These include digital platforms, law firms, auditing and accounting firms, valuers, sales intermediaries or brokers, and more. In the secondary market sector, there are exchanges, custodians, and wallet providers. In the primary markets, looking specifically at the market of tokenized securities offerings, the amount of funds raised is growing significantly year on year. From 2020 onwards, we've seen about a growth rate of around 35% year on year. The secondary markets differ from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. In the US, for example, the secondary trading market platforms are divided between non-securities digital assets and securities digital assets. Non-securities digital assets trading platforms, for example, Coinbase, have a large and strong base of retail traders. Securities digital assets trading platforms in the United States have historically been focused on accredited investors, professional investors, which essentially creates a private securities market. We see this type of client base actually expanding to retail traders over time in the United States market. In Asia, especially in Hong Kong and Singapore, we see a similar distinction where non-securities digital assets are traded on platforms that cater to retail users. For example, in Singapore, the Monetary Authority of Singapore allows retail trading of non-security digital assets. For the trading of securities digital assets, trading platforms in both jurisdictions, Hong Kong and Singapore, currently do restrict trading to professional investors only. So with that, I hope we've given you a comprehensive overview into what asset tokenization is, what its benefits are, and who's using it to date. In the next section, we'll be taking you through a deep dive on why people are tokenizing today.